Robert Mercer is known for being a billionaire GOP mega donor, part owner of Cambridge Analytica, for helping bankroll Breitbart News, and for being an ally to President Trump. But Bloomberg recently revealed that for years he was also a New Mexico cop. Mercer reportedly was a volunteer policeman in a tiny town of Lake Arthur from 2011 to 2017. My colleague Elaine Cajano spoke with Zachary Maida, who wrote that piece for Bloomberg. First of all, let's start with your description here of Robert Mercer. This is a person that you've covered for two and a half years. Mm -hmm. And early on in your piece, you say that he's basically this hard right version of that guy in that beer commercial, the most interesting man in the world. What do you mean by that? Well, he just, there just seemed to be this endless number of stories about this guy that are just so fascinating in totally different ways from the stockpile of urine that he's funding in, in the Oregon mountains to his habit of constantly whistling People to himself. People at home are like, did, did he just say urine? <laughs> yes, you did say That's urine. That's right. Okay. That's right. All right. Because we, don't, we can't, don't have time to get into it, but basically this was for research and, and science, and people can That's Google right. that later. That's for another That's conversation. Right. All right, yeah. but continue. Uh, to his habit of whistling constantly, like even during business meetings, to uh, this pioneering research he did that actually kind of formed the basis of what became... Google Translate. He, he did the original research on that in the 1980s. A brilliant mind. That's right. So let's talk about um, this gun enthusiast side of Robert Mercer, which you go into really uh, amazing detail on. Um, why is it that Robert Mercer, who lives in Suffolk County, New York, decided that he would volunteer as a policeman in New Mexico? Well, as far as we can tell, it's important to note that Mr. Mercer doesn't talk to the press in general, didn't talk to me. Uh, but as far as we can tell, it was to, in order to uh, become a police officer under a 2004 law, you can carry a weapon uh, even when you're off duty, even when you're out of state. And so even though he's just a volunteer reserve officer, this, this gave him a badge that he can use. It's essentially like having a concealed carry license in all 50 states at the same time. And so how did that law come about? I mean, we don't, it, it's such sort of an intricate um, web sure. what, that you describe at how that 2004 legislation came to be. I, I can only imagine that the, that the intent behind the law was for the protection of police officers, mm -hmm. of existing police officers, so that when they're off duty, they could protect themselves and their families for the most part, or maybe protect the public because they're trained professionals. Um, I'm not sure Congress anticipated the notion that people might try to get this designation uh, without becoming full-time officers in order to take advantage of the, the um, benefits that come with with having a badge. So let's talk about this town in New Mexico, Lake Arthur, a town of 433 people, you write. How did Robert Mercer become aware of Lake Arthur's Reserve Corps? Right. Uh, so Lake Arthur is kind of an unusual police department um, in that, you know, when I went there, there were there's one full time police officer, Chief, Chief Norwood, and um, and 400 and some people and a reserve program with at one time as many as 150 Reservists, they're from all over the country. They're, they're from New York and California. Many of them are former Navy SEALs. And so it didn't look like a normal, these aren't the guys like directing traffic at the high school football game that you might be familiar with from your local police department. Okay, so what did he do for them as far as we know? And what is the training, the actual training like? Because Chief Norwood made it sound as though there is an intense, rigorous process here for people who volunteer. He, he, he did make it sound as if there was a lot of, um, uh, training and also annual requirements, six days of patrol per year. Um, however, he wouldn't really talk about any individual officers, so I wasn't able to get details on exactly what Mr. Mercer did. But one thing we do know is that a foundation that he funded actually gave at least one grant to the department, um, and his son-in-law helped set up another nonprofit that that sent some money to the department. And so there were there were some financial uh, connections between Mr. Mercer and the department as well. So has Mr. Mercer always had this interest in gun rights? As far as I know, he, he's he's a NRA, NRA member. And when he built his mansion, which was long before this and on the north coast of Long Island, he actually built a pistol range in the in the basement. So we know he's been a um, an avid shooter for, for quite some time. And you report that Mercer moved into gun manufacturing in 2016. Why get into the gun business? Right. So he's he, separate from the, the Lake Arthur stuff. He's also got a bunch of gun businesses. He tried to sort of get into international arms dealing. 
uh, by buying a company in Nevada. And then he also got into, um, uh, actually, he bought a company that makes uh, assault-style rifles in South Carolina. Wow. And has the Trump presidency helped Mercer in any of these efforts, as far as you can tell? I would say, especially the assault rifle business, it was probably a negative because having a, a strong gun rights supporter like President Trump in the White House, of course, led to a decline in sales. A lot of people were buying guns under Obama, worried that the president might do something to restrict them. Mm -hmm. And so it's actually led to a lot of um, pain in the gun industry since um, Donald Trump came into office. So in the short term, it's negative. As someone who has covered Robert Mercer for years, this information about being a reserve police officer in Lake Arthur is something we hadn't heard before. Your reporting, did that surprise you? It, uh, it surprised me, but I'm used to being uh, surprised by Robert Mercer because it seems like every day I hear some, some bonkers tale that can't, can't possibly be true, and then it turns out that it is. And how close do you think you are to an interview with him, Zach? <laughs> That's what we, really we want to know. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Maybe right, tomorrow's crossed. the day. <laughs> All right, come back and talk to us then. Zachary Miter, thanks so much, Zach. Appreciate it. Thank you. And Zach Maida has written a new piece about Lake Arthur's Volunteer Reserve Officer Program. He reports that the town's mayor says he has shut it down and is asking current reserve officers to hand in their credentials.